Hi everyone and welcome to Build Your AutoCAD IQ. Today we're going to be presenting Tips and Tricks Part 2. My name is Ashley and joining me today are my colleagues Dave and Nauman, who's going to be helping to answer some of your questions. We'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their day to be here. We're certainly very happy to have you. So a little bit about us. Um, so Dave is one of our presenters and he's a technical support specialist based out of our Manchester office. I'm also a technical support specialist. I'm in Boston, but here today with Dave. And Nauman, our AutoCAD expert elite, is based out of Westchester, Ohio, and he's going to be helping to answer some of your questions. So before we get started, um, we'd just like to uh, go through a couple of quick polls with you. And the first one is, is this your first Autodesk help webinar? And that was pretty quick. <laughs> so for, for a lot of you know, this is not your first webinar, so welcome back. And for about... 5% of you or so, this is your first uh, Autodesk webinar, so welcome. And Dave's going to go ahead and share the results. And the next poll that we have is um, which AutoCAD-based application are you using? So it looks like most of you are using AutoCAD, a few, about 27% are AutoCAD LT users and 15% of you are using um, architecture or MEP, and about 13% are using Civil 3D or AutoCAD Map. So thank you for helping us with those polls. we just like to get an idea of who our audience is. So before we get started, please feel free to leave questions in the chat window and we'll answer them as best we can. As always, these sessions are recorded and the links are available in the registration reminder, the post-webinar survey, as well as the chat window. Some of our upcoming webinar topics include um, Back to Basics on July 28th, and that's going to be an introduction to annotation objects in AutoCAD LT 2017, August 4th, Beyond the Basics, Working with Styles in AutoCAD 2017, August 11th, The Third Dimension, 3D Printing with AutoCAD 2017 and Print Studio. And on August 18th, Dave and I are back with some more tips and tricks. Um, you can watch past webinars anytime on YouTube. Uh, feel free to download the data sets from Box if you'd like to follow along. Um, you can sign up and register for the Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar series on the landing page. So please send your friends there, your colleagues, and, and register for the series. Um, please visit and also encourage your peers to visit our AutoCAD community forums and share your knowledge. If you'd like to join the AutoCAD Customer Council um, and get involved with uh, development and, and influencing future releases of AutoCAD, you can do so by emailing autocad.beta at autodesk.com. And our Autodesk Knowledge Network, you can find um, hotfixes, service packs, um, articles for both AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT. So please visit our Autodesk Knowledge Network. And today's agenda includes um, some tips and tricks that Dave and I are going to be presenting. All right. So Dave, I have a couple of questions. I know how to select objects in AutoCAD using a window selection, but can you tell me if there are additional ways to select objects or any tips on object selection? Uh, sure, actually. And uh, I apologize ahead of time if there's any uh, keyboard noise, but uh, I'll try to type quietly so you don't have too many, too many uh, keystrokes as I'm going through. So, uh, so obviously, um, object selection is a very important thing inside of AutoCAD. And I think most people know that if uh, you start a command and you start moving a cursor to the right, you get what we call a window selection. And, and we actually will show that using a blue highlighting by default. If I move my cursor to the left, we get a crossing window. So the difference between those two is that uh, uh, the window selection going to the right means that in order for something to be selected, it has to be completely within the box that I'm creating. Uh, if I go with the crossing selection, you can see that it's highlighting some of those outside dimensions that fall outside the box. 
because it, um, a crossing selection will select everything inside or touching the boundary box. Uh, one of the nice things, though, is you can actually start a command, and I can type in W for window, and it will give me a window selection regardless of which way I'm going. Or I could type in a C for crossing, and I'll get a crossing window for each, each either side, going left to right or right to left. Um, so we can always override it. If you always like selecting right to left, but you want to do a window selection sometimes, you can change that. Uh, one of the new things that started in, uh, I think, I believe it was in 2016, is what we call a lasso selection. And this can be really handy. Basically, if I hold down my left mouse button and I uh, keep the left mouse button selected, and I, I can basically start drawing a window that uh, is an odd shape. So I can select things that are um, you know, not just within a rectangular boundary. And that works the same way. If I were to start going to the right or, or to the left, I'll get a crossing window. So that's uh, just quick you know, basic selection. But there's some more advanced selection methods. Uh, if I were to start the move command and I want to grab something and maybe it's really close to something else, um, you can see right now I think that the, the vertical line is highlighted. If I hold down the shift key and I hit the space bar, you can see that it actually is toggling between those two entities that are next to one another. So if you have overlap, overlapping entities or you have something really close to one another, you can hold shift and then the space bar and it will toggle between those things. Um, also, uh, if you're building a selection set, so you just grab some items, and I want to add something else, uh, I can hold down the Alt key, and I can pick on objects. So I can add things without having to, again, do a window selection. Or if I want to remove objects, then I hold down the Shift key, and I select objects, and that will get rid of those objects from my selection set. Uh, and then one last thing that I just wanted to show, uh, and this is um, you either have this issue or you don't, I guess. Sometimes you'll end up in, in paper space. We have um, multiple viewports. And in this case, I'm in this big viewport. But there's a little viewport that's nested underneath it, and there's no way for me to select inside that viewport to make it active. Uh, but if I just hold down, if I select Control and R, you'll see that it actually will toggle the active viewport. So I can sit here and, and make that little viewport active, or I can make the large viewport active. Thanks, Dave. Sometimes when I work in drawings, it seems like I'm constantly changing between commands to copy, move, and rotate objects to their required location. Is there any way to speed up this process? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, this is actually a great tool in the Express tools. So this would only be available with AutoCAD. It's not available in AutoCAD LT because AutoCAD LT doesn't have the Express tools. But there's a command here called Move, Copy, Rotate. So for example, I've got a little cubicle set up here, and I want to copy this desk and chair up and then you know, basically you know, mirror them on the other side. And we can do that with a single command. So I can just sit there and select Move, Copy, Rotate. I'll grab the uh, chair and the desk. And then I'm going to say, I'll just give it a base point, I should just eyeball things. And I'm going to say, I want to start by doing a copy. And you can see there's actually um, additional commands in here. So you can move things, copy things, rotate things, scale things, change the base point, or undo what you did. But move, copy, rotate, scale, base just doesn't fit very well in the menu. So we just shorten it down to that. So I can sit there and say, I want to copy this. And I can come over and uh, just turn ortho on. By the way, turning ortho on just so it, it stays up and down is just selecting the FA key. So I just create that. And then I'm going to uh, maybe just drag one across over here. And I'm going to say I want to rotate this. So I'm just going to rotate it. And then I'm going to go back into the move command, move it over here, and then go back into copy, and I'll copy it up. So with one command, I'm able to do all those various steps all at once. That's really helpful. So when I have text that I've imported from a document or some other source, sometimes the text is shown in mixed case. So for example, upper and lower case letters. But all the upper case letters, they're easier to read in a print. So how can I change text that is in mixed case to be, for example, all upper case letters? Okay, sure. So I have an example here in this drawing where uh, I imported this note from, from a Word document. And uh, it was in mixed case in Word, and I want to change it all to uppercase. 
So I'm just going to double click on it. This is just M text. And uh, I'm going to select all of the text. And it, it's right in the middle of your face. No, it's, it's, it's kind of hidden within this uh, user interface. There's a, a little tiny uh, arrow here with uh, says options. If I select on options and I can come down to uh, change case and I can just force everything to be uppercase. So you can see that it just changed everything in that little model. Uh, there's also, if I just uh, undo this, go back here, there's another way to do this instead of uh, going into the options. It's, uh, I think you need three hands to do this, but uh, if you hold control and shift and then the U button, that'll toggle to uppercase and control shift L toggles to all lowercase. So you could do that just using the keyboard if you like. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind, that's very helpful. So my next question is, I'm wondering if there's a way to associate objects together so that you can copy and move things without turning them into a block. Is there a way to do that? Yeah, um, it's funny you should ask. <laughs> it's um, as if you knew I was going to... Yeah, I already had the drawing open and everything. Um, so there's a, a, basically a way to um, associate objects without turning them into a block. So you get the, the best of both worlds here. If I come over to the uh, Home tab, there's a command here called group. And what a group does is it'll create a, a quasi-block, right? So when I select it, you'll see that when I, I pick on this um, grouping, that I now just have a single grip, so I can copy this over or, uh, or move it, right, just using a, uh, a single grip point. Um, so that's great, but uh, sometimes you need to make some changes to it, or you, maybe I want to select things individually. So uh, if I go and select on the group, I can go over and, well, there's a number of things here. Um, one thing I want to do is edit the group. So I'm going to hit edit, actually, before I do that. Uh, I'm just going to insert um, a phone on my desk and insert, specify on screen would be good. So I'll put a little phone there, and I'm also going to insert uh, a computer. And I'm sure that people can hear my keyboard, but I can't do much about that, I'm sorry. So I'm just going to put a computer there. So now when I uh, select on the, the group, I'm going to go over to, uh, to edit, and I'm going to say I want to add objects to the group. And when I do that, this is now a new grouping that has those additional objects. But you can also do the same thing with the group by moving objects. Uh, and then if you needed to make a change to a group uh, without wanting to redefine it, maybe I just need to move a chair or something for some reason, we could turn group selection on or off. So now you can see that I actually have grips for individual chairs as opposed to the overall object. And then when you're done, you can just put it um, the grouping back to on, and now this is a single object again that we can work with. All right. So when using fillet and chamfer, it seems like I'm constantly going back between a radius or distance and square edges. Is there a way to avoid this? Um, of course there is. Otherwise, we wouldn't be asking you. <laughs> uh, so yes. Um, oops. Sorry. Moving my mouse a little bit. Just a little bit here. Uh, so if I start the, the fillet command, and I do a radius, and I'm going to set the radius to 24 inches, you're going to see that when I select on an object and I, I get near this other one, that AutoCAD is going to give me a preview of what I'm selecting. And if I just hit the other object, it will go ahead and fill it that, those two lines with that 24-inch radius arc. So if I do the same thing over here, but maybe I want that to just be a, a straight 90-degree angle, if I just hit the Shift key, you can see that it will toggle between using the radius and not. So I didn't have to set the radius back to zero. I can just sit there and uh, hit shift. And that works the same way with chamfer. If I select chamfer, and I'm going to set a distance of two feet, right, I can pick on the two lines, and it will give me a nice 45-degree angle chamfer. And if I don't want that, I just hit the shift key, and that will set that to a straight 90 degree angle. Thanks, Dave. When I explode a block with attributes, the attributes don't retain their value. How do I explode a block and keep the attribute values? Okay. 
Yeah, there's a, uh, a another command in Express Tools. Actually, you go to this other drawing. So I've got a, a block here with uh, some attribute information, and uh, when there's a tool in Express Tools here called Attribute Explode. It's actually called the command is called Burst, but I can simply select something, and uh, oh, uh, my Express Tools aren't working. If they if it was working properly, it would uh, explode this, but still maintain the values of all of those attributes. So uh, give that a try if you. Have that need. And is that also is that only available in AutoCAD or can I do that in LT as yeah, well? Right. Again, that that's an Express tool, so it'd only be available in LT. Okay. How how can I modify lots of objects at once? So, for example, how do I change everything in a drawing to have a color that is by layer? Sometimes I get drawings from other firms where objects are defined by color or even have different Z values when all I want is a flat 2D drawing. It would really be great to have some tools to help clean up these drawings. Um, and it just so happens I have a drawing where I have some of these problems. Perfect. <laughs> Um, so this is actually a command that, uh, you know, for, if you're an old-time user, uh, this is probably a command that you're very familiar with. But there's a command called change. And the change command allows me to change all kinds of different properties. So one thing I do when I'm cleaning up a drawing is I'll start by using the change command. And when it asks me to select objects, I'll just type in all to select everything that's in my drawing. And then you see that there's an option here uh, called properties. And I can change the color, the elevation, layer, line type, scale, line weight, thickness, transparency, material, or uh, whether or not things, things are annotative. So when I get a, a drawing from somebody else, one of the things I'll do is I'll, I'll use change, and then I'll say color, and uh, I'm just going to type in by layer. So um, everything will take on the property of the layer instead of the properties of you know, somebody manually changing things. Um, and in this case, let me actually let me undo that so you can see what happened just a little bit here. I've got the, the stairwell here is set to yellow as well as uh, these um, plumbing fixtures. So when I did a change, properties, oh, change all, previous works as well, <laughs> properties, color by layer, you'll see that the uh, stair just changed color because it's now taking on the property of um, the the uh, layer here uh, it was um, color was yellow now it's color by layer um, I'm, I'm going to come back to the plumbing fixture in, in a minute because I think you have another question for me uh, but uh, there's also some elements over here that I want to talk to you about um, let's see if I can get to this so I just switched to a 3D view or looking at this from a front view. And you'll see that I've got some elements here that are not at a, a zero elevation. So you could use change here as well. I can say all. And this time I'm going to go to properties, elevation, and I'm going to say zero. And you'll see that it just dropped that uh, polyline down. The problem with this polyline, which is a slightly different issue, and sometimes you have to do some cleanup here, is that uh, it actually has uh, their lines, but they're at different elevations. And when I come over to my property palette, um, basically all we want to do is change the Z values for each to be zero, and that'll help flatten your drawing. And then I can just type in plan to go back to my plan view. Um, well, so, so I've got the other thing that I wanted to mention here is uh, these plumbing fixtures. So these are blocks. And the block is still set to uh, color by layer. But uh, the problem is that the block was actually defined on a layer with a, or, or defined with the entities on a particular color. So the entities are color yellow within the block. And there's a command over on the home pat panel on the modify tab uh, called uh, set to by layer. And this will actually work through blocks. So if you have something where you say, okay, I want to make everything white, but you still have things showing up in red and yellow, um, you could try the set to by layer command. And, Ellen, there we go. And then uh, select the objects. I'm just going to window this. And uh, actually, oops, one more, th one more thing real quick before I get into that. So I'm going to go into settings. And you'll see, you're going to see that the settings for this 
will actually allow me to do more than just the color. So I can set to uh, you know, line type by, by a layer of line weight, material, and transparency. These are all the default settings. And if you don't want to do those, you can turn some of those off. So I'll just select the uh, objects. And then it's going to say, do you want to change all the by block layer colors to by layer? And I'll say yes. And uh, do I want to include blocks in my selection set? And I'll say yes. And you can see now that the uh, plumbing fixture is taking on the color of the layer instead of being yellow. Now, other than freezing layers, is there a quick way to hide objects that make working on a drawing difficult? Uh, there's, a, there's a great tool for that. Um, and it, it, it can be really handy. Uh, there's a, an option over in the status bar. And uh, it's called uh, Isolate Objects. And if it's not visible, you can just go to the customization panel here and uh, right down the bottom. Just make sure that this is checked to turn it on. But what isolate objects will do is it's going to temporarily uh, remove things from my display. So there are two options. One is select uh, everything that I want to see. And the other thing is I can tell it what I don't want to see. So if I said isolate objects and I wanted to work on you know, the stairwell here, I can select the stairwell, and it's going to get everything else out of, out of my display, and I'm left with just the stairwell. And then um, if I, there are additional things I want to get rid of, I can hide things. I can say, I really don't want that, and I don't want this portion of the top here, and I don't want those dimensions, and that will continue to get rid of things. Uh, and when you're done, you just go back over and send, say, end object isolation, and it'll bring everything right back. So it's a great way to temporarily you know, get things out of your way without having to freeze and thaw layers, or, or really it doesn't care what layer something is at all. It just takes it out of the display for you. That's really helpful. Can you explain object tracking to me and possibly show me how it works? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to draw a line over here and return to walk the off because I want to draw it up at some weird angle. And I'll draw this one at some other weird angle. And, um, what I want to do maybe is I want to um, select a point where these two objects intersect or something like that. Um, what, what I can do, and this is a little bit tricky, uh, first of all, we want to make sure our object snaps are turned on. And when I start with my line, uh, what I'm going to do is instead of, uh, I'll start over here with the line, and I'm not actually going to pick the line. All I'm doing is hovering my mouse over the end of that line to acquire that point. So AutoCAD sees me pausing there. And when I move my cursor, you'll see that it now gives me this little temporary dashed line showing up within, um, within my display. Uh, and then uh, I wanted this to be uh, you know, relative to the midpoint or whatever the other line. I can just hover over and get the midpoint. Again, I'm not picking it, just hovering over that object snap. And now when I come over, uh, actually, that's, yeah, I'll just come over here to this one. Um, it, it has to be able to find something for, for midpoint. But the, I can just sit there and say, this is where I want to start from. And that's the intersection, basically, of those two, two coordinates, or those two objects that I was selecting. Um, but I can do the same thing. If I wanted to be relative to the middle of this, then uh, yeah, we, we can grab things as well using, that, using other object snaps. All right. And the last question that I have for you is, sometimes I need to do a screen capture of a drawing or an error message, but I don't have any programs to capture the screen. So other than taking an actual picture of the screen, is there a way to get a screen capture with standard out-of-the-box Windows tools? Yeah. Um, so let's say I wanted to capture my display right now. Um, so I have a, a standard keyboard. And one of the keys up on the top row of my keyboard is called print screen. So it's usually right next to the F12 key. Uh, if I select the print screen button, um, it doesn't show that I just did anything, but you can trust me that it did. It uh, actually created a, a capture of my display. And I'm just going to go over into all programs under uh, accessories. And most Windows applications have something called paint. And if you have a, a Mac or something, and I'm, I'm sure there's something similar to this. And inside of paint, I'm just going to do control V for paste. And now I have my uh, screen captured into an image file. 
So if I needed to draw a box or something around whatever and you know put a note over here about something, I can mark up my display and then just save this image and send this image to somebody. So no reason to you know have some kind of fancy utility, just use the stuff that's right inside of AutoCAD. All right. Thanks, Dave. Okay. And I think turnabout's fair play. I think I should ask you a few questions. I, I think that's fair enough. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so my first question for you, um, I've heard about these things um, or the ability to add a link to, to a website or to a, a Word document or Excel file. Uh, so for example, maybe I, I have that plumbing fixture or, or something that I wanted to, to create a link to. And uh, how, do I, how do I create a link to another type of document or website to, uh, to an object inside of AutoCAD? Yeah, so great question. I'm happy you asked. Hyperlinks are actually very useful tools to provide information about your objects. Um, you can either point them to a manufacturer's website or you can link them to a Word document that contains specific uh, procedures or to an Excel file even. And you can add hyperlinks to, um, to any object. So what we can do here is in the Insert tab, we're going to go to the Data panel and click on Hyperlink. All right, so now it's going to ask us to select our object. Okay, and it's going to bring up this dialog box where we can either type in the URL or link the document. So let's say I'm just going to uh, select that tree boundary and use the um, Autodesk website. Yeah, I think that's what I would use. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Right. So I'm going to click OK, yeah, Ashley. and then if I hover oh, my mouse... Hold on, Ashley. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Donnie. Uh, your voice is very um, uh, uh, low. If you can uh, please speak up a little bit. Um, Talk a little bit louder. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, let me know if you can hear me. So I'm going to hover my mouse over the tree boundary here, and then it's going to um, pop up this flyaway with the link to the URL. So to access the URL, I'm just going to press the Control button and select the object and it is going to bring up the website right here. All right, so that's how that works. Yeah, that's great. So this drawing that you have, it, it's a, a pretty complicated drawing, and it, it looks kind of like uh, some of the drawings that I get, and it, it's really hard for me to figure out what's on what layer, is, you know, other than picking on each individual thing. Is there an easy way to see what's on what layer? or maybe to find everything that's on the, uh, um, a driveway layer? Yes, and it's going to save you a lot of time. And what you can do is in the Home tab, if we click on the drop-down arrow here, we're going to see this little icon with uh, two little feet, and it's called Layer Walk. And what Layer Walk does is it's going to display objects on selected layers and hide objects on all other layers. So if we open that, um, by default, when you start the command, anything that is visible is highlighted. So I can easily go through these, um, the different layers here and, and select what I need. Now if I wanted to, if I have hundreds of layers and I wanted to find the, um, the tree line layer, what you need to do is um, put in, type an asterisk and then type the name of the layer, followed by another asterisk, and then enter. And that's going to filter um, directly to the, to the tree line layer, so I don't have to spend my time going through all those. If I deselect the filter, it's going to bring back all the other layers. And then another little thing down here is the restore on exit. If I have this um, selected, when I close the dialog box, all the layers are going to reappear. And there we go. Okay, that's great. So I noticed um, when you uh, would just had the uh, that tool that you had to select the little drop down in the to get to that tool. Is there a way to keep something like you know maybe it, um, I want that annotation panel to always be open as opposed to having to select it each time? Yeah, there is. And one thing that you can do is um, if you click on the drop down here, you'll see a little um, pin icon. 
if we select that, it's going to pin that, um, that panel open so we can use it while we're, we're working on our drawing. Um, and now, one thing to note is that if you, if you change tabs, for example, that pin is, is no longer um, going to be there. Uh, which actually brings me to another pretty cool tool, which is um, you can actually drag your, um, your panels out here into model space. So even if you, if you change tabs, you'll still have these, um, these panels out here while you work. Um, you can put the panel back to its place either by dragging and dropping it, or if you're like me and you don't remember, you can click on this little icon here, return panels to ribbon, and it's going to return it back exactly where it needs to go. Well, that, that looks like that would save a lot of time when, when I'm doing dimensioning and stuff, not having to jump back and forth from one tab to another. It is. It's a, it's a time saver. All right, so I'm going I'm to stump you here, I bet. You know how in AutoCAD, uh, whenever you draw something, it, it, it just goes to the current layer? When I'm dimensioning things, I don't want it to go to whatever layer I happen to be drawing last. I want it to go to a dimension layer. Is there a way to do that? Yes, there is. So, oh, um, darn it. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> um, so what we can do here is let's, um, we have these parking lines. So we can uh, add a dimension here. See, that went to the current layer. That's it did go to the current layer. So what we're going to do, I'm going to show you this little trick here. So right now it's on the current layer, but if we switch over to the annotate tab, and then we go to our we go to our dims layer here, and then we add another dimension. So with this tool, whenever you add a dimension to the drawing, um, it's automatically going to land on your dimension layer regardless of which layer is active. So you can avoid having to, um, to change layers. Well, that definitely will help. I thought I'd stump you, but I guess not. Okay. I, so sometimes in the, in the, when I get drawings from people, some of the, my clients aren't very good with AutoCAD. I'll end up with uh, you know, a, an object with a, just a whole bunch of lines to look like a chair or something, and I... I want to turn that into, you know, I don't want to have everything be separate objects. How do I, how do I turn that into something so it's a single object? Yeah, so you can, um, you can help reduce your, uh, your file size by, um, by using blocks. And I'll show you that now here. Um, so let's say that we have this, um, we have this tree here. And we want, you know, let's say, you know, 100 lines make up the tree, and instead of using another 100 lines to, to make another tree, we can simply turn these lines into a block. And we can do that by activating the block command. So I'm going to name this tree. Make a point here. So now we've turned that um, into a block. And if you just, as a side note, if you want objects to take on the properties of the current layer, you want to make sure that layer is set to zero. And if you don't, then you have to use that command that I showed you, right, where you can change things to by layer again. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so what if you, um, so I get a, you get the tree there, but mm -hmm. maybe I want a tree that's like that, but not quite like that. Do I have to explode it and start from scratch? No, you can actually um, duplicate block definition, and the way we can do that is by selecting our block and opening the block editor, and let's say we'll erase some lines here to make this tree not as beautiful, and we'll um, select the drop-down arrow here, and we'll save our block. And then we'll close the block editor, and then we'll insert our scraggly tree here. And then if we want, we can copy it. And now we have a forest of scraggly trees. It looks like a storm must have hit. <laughs> All right, so uh, um, 
another thing that I like, uh, you know, I, I love the keyboard shortcuts, but they don't always match the shortcuts that I like. So, for example, I'm used to just typing XX to delete something as opposed to E for erase. How can I change erase to use XX instead of E? Yes, I'm happy you asked that, and we do we do have a lot of users that, for example, they're using another product and they use other command aliases that they would also like to use in AutoCAD. So one way that we can do this is um, if we go to Express Tools, we have the command aliases icon here. If we select that, so on the left here we have our aliases, and on the right we have our AutoCAD commands. So if we want to, um, to rename the alias for the erase command, we're going to select that, click edit, and then you said you wanted, you used XX, so let's, let's use XX for that. We're going to click OK, and we'll bring this back up. We're going to want to apply our changes, and it's going to ask you um, multiple times just to make sure that you actually want to do what you're doing. Uh, so we'll click yes, OK. All right. Now let's say I draw a line here, and then I want to erase that. So now I'm going to click. I'm going to type in xx, and I can erase my line. And so for those of you, this only what I did now only applies in um, AutoCAD. But for those of you that are using uh, LT, um, you can access the editor from the Manage tab. So before I was in Express Tools, and now you want to go to Manage tab, and you're going to select Edit Aliases, and that's going to bring up the PGP file where you can go ahead and um, and edit, uh, you know, whichever aliases you want to, and the changes will not take effect until you close AutoCAD and reopen it. So you want to make sure you do that so that they'll they'll have those changes. So in AutoCAD, they take effect right away, but in LT, you'd have to close and restart it. Okay. Exactly, yeah. All right, so um, I see, you know, AutoCAD has lots of palettes, right? There's, you know, the property palette, which we've been using, but there's layers and XREF and Sheet Set Manager and all kinds of things. And I'm always moving them around to get them out of the way. What can I do to, to you know, help avoid that? So to help avoid that, there are a couple of different things that we can do, and they're, um, for the most part, they're based on your preference, but I'll just show you how we can, um, how we can at least help get there. So we have, these, um, we have these palettes here. One thing that we can do that's helpful is um, uh, the palettes have the, the auto-hide feature. So if I click on the auto-hide feature, um, as soon as I as soon as I move my cursor away from the palette, it's going to collapse back to the side panel. If I if I click on that to keep it open, even if I move my cursor away, it's still going to the palette's still going to be open. Yeah, but I still have them in my way all the time. Exactly. I have to move them. Yes. So we're going to move them now. Um, the way we can move them is we want to make sure that allow docking is selected. And again, this part is based on your preference. I'm I'm left-handed, so I prefer mine on the left, I can anchor my palettes um, over to the, uh, to the left here. And I'll do that with this one as well. So we'll anchor that to the left. left. And then another thing that we can do is um, if we right click here, um, I can have my palettes either appear as text only or as icons. So that's um, again based on your on your preference there. I think you're missing the property oh, palette. Yep. So yeah, allow anchoring and talk. Yeah, there we go. I'll anchor that to the left. So I don't like icons though. You, you said I can because I, I can can't tell the difference. But you said I can make that text as well. Yeah, you can make it text as well. If we right click in the light gray area here and then we select text only, that's going to bring the uh, the. Uh, have the palettes appear as text. Oh, that's cool. It's a lot better than having to move them all the time. And, uh, oh, um, th there's something that I, that's been a problem once in a while. My mouse tends to be a little finicky sometimes, and um, it, it's like I need to be able to get to a command within the ribbon, but I don't have access to a mouse. Is there a way to access commands just from the keyboard? 
Yes, there is. Um, so AutoCAD has a number of ribbon shortcut keys. And a, an easy way to, um, to see that is if we press the Alt key, it's going to display um, letters and numbers under the ribbon tabs. And if you press that particular number or letter, it's going to activate that tool or tab. So let's say I want to um, activate the ap application menu. Um, I'm going to press Alt and then F, and then that should activate the application menu. So that's one of the things that we can do. Okay, and you just hit the Alt key once, right? So that, that starts the, the things from showing up, so just Alt and then F. You don't have to hit Alt again. No, no, just Alt and then F. Cool. That, that uh, could be handy because I like typing too, so to be able to get the commands. So like I said I've been using AutoCAD for a long time. Um, so uh, every once in a while I'll do something kind of silly. I'll accidentally erase something and then um, realize, you know, five minutes later after I did a whole bunch of other things that I erased something that I needed. What do I do about that? Yes. So I don't want to have to undo it all and redo it all. <laughs> no, and you shouldn't have to. And there's a way that we can that we can help with that. So um, let's say that by mistake I um, I here let's use another. Uh, let's say that by mistake I I delete this um, this boundary here. Oops, and that should so I erase that boundary there, and now let's say I do a number of um, a number of other things. Like I, I copy this over here, and I want to this sign over here. And then all of a sudden, I realized um, that I actually had erased something that I didn't want to erase, and I don't want to have to undo all my work. So all I have to do is I have to type in the oops command, and it's going to restore the last erased object. So it comes in very, very handy so that you don't have to have these moments and, and undo every, all the work that you've done. So it's time saver. I usually call it something else, but oops will work, I guess. Um, and the, the last thing before uh, we wrap it up, I guess, is uh, I still have people in my office that are using an older release of AutoCAD. And uh, you know, when, when I go and save the drawing, I have to save it as a uh, 2010 file format. And I have to do that each time. So. How do I avoid that step? So there are a couple of different ways we can um, we can save a, a drawing in a, a default version. The first way that we can do that is by um, by typing in the options command, and that's going to bring up the options dialog box. And then we're going to go over to the open and save tab. And then right here we can actually um, change our, our version. So right now we have uh, 2013, but we can also uh, select 2010 um, if we want to do that. Another way that we can do that is from the, um, the application menu. And we'll go to save as. And then up here on the right-hand corner the, in the Tools drop-down, we want to select, again, Options. And then uh, from here also, we can uh, select the version that we want to save the, um, the drawing. So that just sets the default format to 2010 format. Exactly. That oh, will set the default cool. format. Well, I thought I had you stumped once or twice. but <laughs> uh. Next time. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Uh, um, now, I'm if we have a couple of quick questions, and then uh, we'll finish the last slides? Yeah. Uh, so uh, there was a, um, a comment about uh, alias edit. You don't have to close the draw, uh, AutoCAD. You can just use the oldie and goldie command called re-init, R-E-I-N-I-T. Uh, thanks, uh, Tim, for uh, pointing that out. OK, um, so that, that just uh, will reinitialize the, the yeah, PGP? You check the, yeah, if you type in re-init right now, whoever has the control, uh, it will pop up a dialog box and you check that box. If you want to show that to somebody, re-init, I-N-I-T, yep. And then check that box, that's PGP file, click OK, right. and re it reloads that file. If you edit it in a notepad or something like that, it, that, that also works. It's a very old command that was used for um, ta tablets and stuff like that, that uh, ta oh, digitizer. That's, that's cool. That's a, I learned something today as well. Um, the, 
just uh, people had uh, some questions just about you know um, how to switch con you know between multiple viewports quickly, and we have answered that, and some of the other expert elite on the uh, program have answered that as well. So, uh, but there was a question: how blocks and groups differ? All right. So, um, blocks versus groups. So, I, I think that, like I said, the the best way to def differentiate a block and a group is that a group can be pulled apart at any time and put back together again without redefining a block. It's it's a temporary relationship between the objects. Um, where a block is more of a static thing. So if, if you want something to always be the same, you'd probably use a block. If you want to be able to uh, change things you know, slightly from one instance of another without having two different block definitions, then you could use a group. That's probably the simplest way to, to describe it. Thanks for the answer. I appreciate that. And I think um, those were the major questions that we had uh, on the, uh, you know, board here, question-wise. Um, some of them I have answered already. Um, so um, thanks so much. All right. So let's uh, we'll uh, finish up with the PowerPoint portion real quick here, and then if we have any other questions that come in, maybe we have time at the end of that to, to continue. So let's uh, just wrap this up, Ashley. All right. So we have some additional resources here. And one thing that we want to mention is look out in the very, very, very near future for a service pack for AutoCAD 2017. In addition, we have um, other resources here and hotfixes for LT and AutoCAD 2017. Uh, so thank you everyone for uh, joining us. We, we hope that you um, enjoyed the webinar and also uh, learned something from the webinar. Uh, if you'd like to email us directly or provide any feedback, um, our email address is autodesk.help.webinars at autodesk.com. And uh, I think we had one more poll that we wanted to get through, and that is our, our last one, of course, uh, which is, uh, did you learn something new in today's webinar? So we're always happy when we see these numbers. It looks like about 95% of you said yes, 5% uh, said no. So we're definitely happy that you learned something new today. We, we, we taught some, most people something, so that's good. <laughs> uh, so I, I do see a, at least a, one question that just came in that uh, is actually something I was going to bring up, um, which is the difference between freezing a layer and, var and turning a layer off. Um, the biggest difference between freeze and off is that freeze actually takes the... that in the background. It's just not displaying it. So um, typically, if, if you want to you know, turn something off and not have it affect performance, you want to freeze it, not turn it off. Hopefully that makes sense, because off is still being processed. There are a couple other nuances, especially when it comes to blocks, too. If you turn off a layer, the objects inside the blocks will not turn off if the block is on a different layer as well, but freeze will uh, completely take it out. Uh, if right. you freeze the block layer, it will freeze the uh, objects inside the blocks, too. Yeah, like I said, uh, freeze definitely gets things out of memory and off the display as opposed to just turning something off. The place where it comes in handy is also in, like, when you do the B hatch command or B poly command, it, it, it will not search that space uh, for line work. Yeah, now it, there's actually a good comment too. Uh, another thing between blocks and groups is, uh, or another benefit of blocks versus groups, I should say, is that uh, using blocks is going to reduce your file size more than a group. A group is still all those individual objects being copied over and over again, as opposed to a single block reference. So you will have a larger file size with a group than you would with a block. So there's a trade-off between those.
So, so somebody was asking about how to stretch AutoCAD onto both screens. Um, I can't show you that uh, because I, I can only show one screen at a time here. But uh, if, if you, instead of minim or maximizing AutoCAD, just uh, set it to whatever the size is, you can actually grab the grip here and just drag it as far as you want. So if you have multiple screens, uh, you should be able to drag it onto the other screens. Same thing with, uh, with you know, two pallets. You can uh, put them on another screen if you want as well. Anything else? screenshot command again. Which one was that? The snipping command in AutoCAD, please? Um, to do a screen capture? Yes, please. Yeah. So uh, it, it's really just a two-step process. One, just uh, set to whatever you want to see. Right? Hit print screen. And it, there's nothing that show, will tell you that you did anything. Right? It's just kind of behind the screens. It would be nice if it gave you some kind of a, a notice or something. But then you just use the paint tool and you're just going to paste it in. So I'm just going to use control V and that will paste whatever I had visible on my AutoCAD or on my monitor. It's not just your AutoCAD screen. It's whatever is available on your monitor uh, into paint and then you can just save the image. Okay. Well, there, there's another one uh, called a snipping tool in Windows as well uh, that works uh, pretty decently. Uh, shy of uh, you know third-party tools. Mm -hmm. yeah, I actually use uh, uh, a tool called Jing for doing screen captures, but th that's it's not a free tool. So I think I use I, I use Snagit. I haven't used Jing before, but I use Snagit usually. Greenshot is a free tool uh, you can download. It's very powerful as well. It's a f uh, I think it's a, a GitHub on the Git or a SourceForge. It's a free software as well very powerful compared to uh, Snagit. Yeah, it, it's a matter of, you know, do you need advanced editing tools or just something to get a quick screen capture? Um, uh -oh. So we, we, I'm just trying to look through some of the Things here. Uh, one, one other thing that I'll ask uh, folks, if you have suggestions for uh, tips and tricks that you would like to see, um, feel free to paste that in as well and we can make a note of it for a future uh, webinar. Yes, I'm um, happy you said that. That's a good idea. But sometimes we r run out of ideas. <laughs> Uh, so if you, if you have ideas, you know, let us know. It's always helpful from the people that are, are the end users to, to give us suggestions because then we can um, we can show you these things, so it always helps. Well, I'm not really seeing a whole lot of anything else. Um, see if I can think of any other cool things that I'd want to talk about here. Dave, uh, somebody had asked about, I think uh, Rick was asking, how do you save all your settings from one version to another um, when we upgrade um, PGP files and uh, the menus and things like that? Can you just kind of quickly touch on Migrate, please? Yeah. Um, I, I will say one thing about migrating custom settings is, uh, you know, if you're going from you know, 2010 to 2017, uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to migrate your settings from that many releases, you know, between releases. Um, but there's, uh, if I go over to Programs, um, over to Autodesk, uh, AutoCAD 2016, um, Migrate Custom Settings, then I could do an export of my settings and in the other release do an import of the settings. And that does a pretty good job. Um, one thing about making changes to PGP files and um, menu files and things is uh, you, know, you want to make sure that you always have those edits backed up somewhere as well. Don't just rely on the migration tools and um, you know, if you're over, overwriting the file that we install,
nice to have a, a backup copy of it somewhere uh, that's not in the default location. And never do a migrate of your settings if you're currently having problems because all you're going to do is migrate your problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, um, a good thing to do or uh, good practice is if you install a version of AutoCAD and uh, you get it set up the way that you like it and everything, export your settings right then and there. Don't wait, you know, months uh, between before you, you do that. You can always do it again later if you make other changes. But uh, if you want to be able to import it, you want to make a, you want to do that export when it's, everything's nice and fresh and working properly. <laughs> yeah, somebody's asking if you can have multiple versions of uh, AutoCAD installed. Um, yeah, <laughs> if I come over here to this, you can see I have uh, AutoCAD MEP or AutoCAD 2013 to 2017 architecture, electrical, LT, MEP. Um, I think it's easier to say what you don't have. <laughs> um, so, yeah, absolutely can. The One of the things when you have multiple versions, again, um, kind of like going you know, a bunch, you know, going backwards, if you have 2013 installed and you want to install 2014, that's not going to be a problem. If you have 2017 installed and you want to install 2014, then you may have some issues because uh, you know newer files might be getting overwritten with older files. But typically, uh, installing a new version uh, along with an older version is not going to cause any problems. Linda, I see that you asked a question about seeing questions, but I don't know if I've seen any other She's questions. Asking, uh, Linda's asking, my ribbon at the top is abbreviated and only shows some of the draw, modify, etc. commands. How do I get it back? There are no down arrows, next, draw, modify, etc. I mean, she can restore the workspace or her window is maximized or not. That might also affect that. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, I mean, it, it could be uh, a couple of things here, and you could have your you know, different uh, options set. Um, so you, I'm just toggling between those over in the side. Um, you know, you may have the ribbon turned off completely. Um, so you know, look at the settings over here on the right, um, uh, and maybe you know that might get it back for you. But if uh, if you've done something and can't figure out how to undo it. A great tool inside of AutoCAD, if it was Autodesk, AutoCAD 2017, is this uh, reset, reset settings to default. And that'll put AutoCAD back into its out-of-the-box state. So again, if you had custom settings, it's going to get rid of those. But that's a great tool when, when things aren't, you know, when you did something by mistake, you can always restore it back to that. I think we're about out of time, I think. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, we're at the top of the hour. So i um, just like to thank everybody for attending. Um, if you have other suggestions, uh, you know, feel free to send them to our you know, that email alias that uh, Ashley was talking about. Um, we'd love to get your suggestions for a future webinar. And uh, I hope everybody has a, a great rest of your day. Thank you.